binaural audio has been around for a hundred years. We didn't invent it. I just applied it to modern technology and gave it a place to live. Oh, oh you hanging out right? Oh, you hanging out right? Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Hanging Out Right. We've got two great guests with us. We have Mr. Uh, Chris Anastas and Jonathan Gordon from SoundFi. Really excited. I know Chuck is really excited because we, we just spent the last 30 minutes talking about them. <laughs> I certainly did. One of the things that impressed me is that you guys are on the cutting edge of something that's going to be real. As a matter of fact, it's already real. And I only hear out of this ear, but it's been going on for so long that this ear really kicks butt. It takes over for, I don't miss not hearing out of this ear. I'm about 5%. And um, I had uh, RME maybe some earphones that I could put on and change the volume between, you know, back and forth. But I don't wear earphones all the time. And I have a habit of just hearing acoustically what's going on around me. When I play, I want the hi-hat on my good ear. However, if it's not there, because sometimes you can't do what you want to do, the, the left ear, I mean, this ear here reaches and grabs and I can hear it, especially if the music is not loud. In earphones, I just cover half my ears. As long as I can hear the hi-hat and hear certain things, I'm used to it, but I would love to be able to sit down to a movie that's not loud. You know, now, now when I mean loud, I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about loud, loud. I'm talking about, we know when the, when the, when the scene gets to where the music is loud and the boom goes on, to be able to hear it and feel like I'm there. Yeah. Because as it is, I'm the kind of person that when I look at a bird chirping, I sort of, my eyes tell me that the bird is here. And I want to be able to hear it as I would. The left ear, like I said, makes me think that I'm hearing it the way that it is. But I would love to hear when I put on earphones. I would love to hear virtual reality of something that is like I was right there in the middle of it. Like a like a burning, uh, uh, a burning fire. Mm -hmm. like a brush, not a brush fire, but like a, 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 a campfire. A, a campfire. Be able to hear it as well as smell it. So that's why I'm very interested and would love to hear. I love hearing you guys talk about what the equipment does. Right. So that's yeah. really where I'm at with this, uh, with, with this, this particular experience. Yeah, we'll get into it. Chris will get into it. It's interesting you talk about the bombastic nature of a sound mix, you know, and how sometimes it's too loud for your eardrums, you know, even through the normal loudspeaker playback. And one of the unique aspects of what we do is you can personalize that experience in the cinema as well as at home by being able to adjust the volume, right? So you may be sitting in a cinema watching your favorite film, right? Your favorite James Bond film, you know, your favorite Mission Impossible, or maybe you like those tear jerkers, Chuck. You know, um, you know, Denzel Washington, you know, kicking some butt. But, you know, in any case, you're able to adjust the volume, no matter what level it's playing back at in the cinema, right? You can play it back in your earphones at your desired, you know, decibel level, which is something that we found was a real attraction for the user, you know, because there's a lot of complaints that, moviegoers make to the, to the cinema that it's way too loud you know and and here you know you can make that choice you can really decide how you want to listen to it not only you know and we'll get into some of the other aspects of it but i i thought that was interesting and you know we've had 
you know, a lot of feel good cases with um, moviegoers and music lovers who aren't hearing, you know, for whatever reason, they have some hearing impairment, right? Um, and they're not able to hear all the intricacies and the textures and, and the, the detail behind that sound mix. And you put those headphones on and all of a sudden it's like, you know, it is a rejuvenation. It's a, a moment that brings tears to some of these moviegoers eyes. We've had a few events where, you know, folks have hearing aids in, you know, um, they've been reluctant to go to the movies um, and their loved ones, their spouse is now punished because they don't go to the movies as a, you know, an outing because it's not enjoyable for the, the folks who have some sort of hearing impairment. And now we've made it more, we've made it possible. And I'll let Chris get into some of the detail around the workflows and the binaural audio delivery. But again, it's a, it's a really gratifying, you know, feeling when we're able to deliver a premium experience and at the same time cast a wide net and make it as inclusive as possible, right? Regardless of the language you speak, you know, regardless of, you know, um, whether you're hearing or visually impaired and regardless of whether you have a $2,000 pair of headphones or a $50 pair of AirPods, right. right? And regardless of which phone you have, right? We've basically broken down the barriers and allowed everybody to enjoy a premium experience, no matter what piece of hardware you have. Anyways, Chris, I just wanted to kind of kick it off there. Yeah, Wayne, absolutely. just going to jump in there. So Jonathan, when you said, you know, uh, someone puts on the headphones and then they have that that delight, that's what we, right? We always like to, in right. business, we want, you want people to have that delight experience, you know? Sure. So I, I in my mind, it was like um, imagining, uh, like in, Al in Wizard of Oz, when they opened the door and everything went from black and white to color. Yeah, that epiphany, right. Yeah, well, yeah it's probably that same kind of feeling. Sure. Of, yeah. I've been seeing the world in black and white, man, and now it's color. Ah, so happy, you know? Yeah. So I'm sorry, I didn't mean to jump in there, but you just, it just, that's kind of no, how that's I was thinking. exactly it. That's exactly it. And, uh, you know, it's one of those things where you may be a naysayer, you may think this is a gimmick, you may not think this is real, that there's some sort of doctoring, there's some sort of, you know, uh, you know, funny business going on here. But this is exactly the way the filmmaker, the artist are intended to be heard. Yeah. Right. And so you know, there's, there's seeing is believing and there's hearing is believing. And we're, we're all about that. And I'll let Chris kind of jump in here with the, what, where, where he came up with the idea and, you know, the vision behind it, um, you know, and, and all the problems and, and challenges it's helping to solve. Great, right. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, so thanks, John, Chuck. Great to, 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 to be here with you. Um, appreciate the interest in, in evolving spatial audio and immersive audio through headphones because it's uh, it's ever growing and 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 it's it's something that realizing where the the viewing medium is and where it's been over the years and where it's going it's a it's a it's been a tremendous uh, uprising of people using headphones for streaming content so it's just going in that direction and now surprising to me the statistics um, is that we're 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 about 50-50 when people stream content, we're at about 50-50 loudspeaker playback and headphones, which is a huge jump from where it was. The world of headphones is just growing and growing and growing in it. And it and it grew immensely with the acquisition uh, with Jimmy Iovine and Dr. Dre when 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 Beats became what it is today. And Apple made that acquisition and 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 Beats turned into a fashion statement too. It was the it was the bring back of the larger headphones. Everybody was trying to get smaller and smaller and small, smaller. And Dr. Dre said, no, 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 no. This is how we're going to listen to music. And everybody went, OK, you're right. Let's buy bigger headphones. And so and 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 that acquisition and what happened with with Apple Music and Dr. Dre and Jimmy, Bain, it just paved the way more and more. Um, and these were signals to me back in the day for I know where this industry is going. It's, it's constantly moving in headphones. And I'll step back to where the origin is because there's a, there's an interesting story to it. But 
the bottom line is like our creed at Soundfine, what we're trying to accomplish is, is if we can elevate the experience of music and movies for anyone with any pair of headphones without having to make a hardware software purchase, we've accomplished our goal. Mm. That's what we're trying to do. The, the consumer every day is constantly burdened with okay, so I, there's 4K, I can't upgrade my software on my HD television get 4K, I got to go to Best Buy and buy 4K. And we're on the road for, for 8K, and there's 6K and 8K televisions, so we're, we're getting there. And, and uh, the, the, you know, the content can't keep up with the technology that's changing. But what's happening in the world is that we're, we're always burdening the consumer with upgrade means you need upgrade. Elevate yeah. means you need to just, you got to buy something, you got to subscribe to something, you just can't receive. So in creating, in, in Soundfight, which I'll explain, you know, what we do and how we do, the, the, the creed of where we are is we elevate, you use any headphone, you plug into any device, any tablet, any laptop, and you receive an immersive spatial experience, period, end of story. And for once, let's take that burden away from the consumer. Just listen we're doing something a little different. We're pre-rendering content so that the user doesn't have to worry. They just listen, you know, and we do that. And we do that in two unique ways. Um, we do it for movie playback. Uh, we work closely with the filmmaker in the studio and we process content through our plugin. We have a Pro Tools plugin, which takes the multi-channel mix, produces a 7.1 or 7.14 or 5.1, or 7.14 through headphones. And for music, it's 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 beautiful we can take a multi-track or, or or you know splits and stems recordings and create something in that same fashion or you know our our, our uh, sound engineers and partners we've all teamed up we created an omni binaural microphone that we place in the room and that allows uh anyone through any pair of headphones to listen as if they were in the room so it gives them a really nice you know, perspective of, of being there. So, um, you know, so, no, I just jump in there. So you have like a seven, let's say a 7.1 mix. Yeah. Which normally in order to appreciate it, you'd have to be in a room with speakers and, and the, uh, so, you know, the subwoofer and all, you know, you're surrounded with speakers and you're taking that and you're reproducing it with two speakers. All right. Yeah. And so is it, is, is it purely imaging? Is it like psychoacoustics? Well, the psychoacoustics, yeah, that's a major part of it. I mean, that, that's going to happen regardless, you know, so it's a, it's a combination of psychoacoustics. There's, there's, um, there's really? measuring that, we're, that was actually done. So this isn't an artificial, artificial recreation. So we've actually done the measurements in a room with microphones and a speaker array to create that vector, to create wow. that imaging. Um, and then, you know, basically taking that and processing audio through that, that vector, um, it's a simulation of being in the room. That's okay. So, so and a, a lot of sound engineers listened to our first, our first couple of demos. And I remember we were working on a Michael Bay film uh, as a demo. We weren't working on the commercial release of our audio. We were demo demonstrating the power of the technology to Michael Bay and team on 13 hours. A lot of gunshots, a lot of Michael Bay moves, you know, not chaos going on. And uh, we were demoing this on the, on, the, on the Warner Brothers lot where the post-production was done. And, and one of the heads of production of post-production came in and he, sat in and he sat in the cinema, put the headphones on and I was behind him and I was watching him watch the Michael Bay scene. He took the headphones off, he turned around, he goes, that's the first time I've ever heard a distinctive dialogue center channel living right out in front of me and floating where it should be through a pair of headphones and he said to yeah. me, he looked at me and he goes mission accomplished you know we've never heard that before we've never heard that imaging out there where it's clear and it goes back to what you were saying chuck is when there's something loud and what you're saying jonathan when there's just chaos it's just noise because the the intention is theatrical playback and playing it back through your loudspeakers at home and there's very little attention for the headphone user you know, they get the, the last of the last comes down for that for user. And we've, we've changed that. We put it right up to the top. So we're equaling, equalizing and balancing things for that phone. And, and it's better than sitting in the movie theater because <laughs> in the movie theater, 
there might be 100, 200 seats. So depending on where I'm sitting, <clears throat> my 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 experience is going to be different because well, not everybody realized. You know, I, I didn't sit where the mixer was sitting. Right. Well, that's, that's yeah. funny that you, that you say that. Um, so two things there. I'll let Chris kind of give a more you know deep dive on the technical side, but one of the things that resonates with me, John, is you know back when I was introduced to Chris when I was uh, overseeing you know, uh, worldwide ops and business development for Sony Pictures. Um, Chris approached us and told us that they had this whiz bang, you know, app, revolutionary app based technology. And he was walking me through it. And he says, we have this headphone dedicated playback for cinema. And it just sent off alarm bells and fireworks. And I didn't know whether I was coming or going. And, you know, it was one of those things where when you have an Antoine Fuqua, right, and the head of the studio asking you to consider it, yeah. you got to sort of bite your lip and hear them out and understand, okay, what's this all about? Why would Antoine be behind this? why would the studio want to push this given all of the headwinds we're going to be facing yeah. from potent, you know, theoretically from creative all the way through to the end user, not to mention the channel partner, the cinema operator who has spent yeah. hundreds of thousands of dollars on a loudspeaker playback infrastructure yeah. and have tried to condition, right. And instruct the moviegoer to put their phone away. Like, <laughs> How am I, how am I going to sell this? Like, where's, where am I threading the needle? How am I going to make this work? Right. And so there's got to be, you know, there's a lot of clear messaging that we delivered to our channel partners, to the Cinemarks, the AMCs, you know, the Regals of the world, but right out of the gate, I heard Antoine Fuqua tell us, you know, when I, when I, when we finished the mix on a film, I call it the funeral because that's the last time I'll ever hear it that good because of all the vagaries in the field, right? And that's no knock on, on a cinema. It's just that every, not everybody's playing at reference. They're not all calibrating their speaker systems, mm -hmm. right? And it's just different from cinema to cinema. But with SoundFi, you get the same listening experience no matter what cinema you're in. And we'll get into some of the, you know, the backbone to it in terms of the synchronous, synchronicity and how this all works. But the beauty of it is that Chris built in a back end logic that, that measures the time it takes for the sync to reach the user's device. And based on that measurement, it initiates some crossfading and latency adjustments to center you. So to your point, John, it doesn't matter where you're seated in the cinema, it's if you're sitting where the sound mixers were sitting when they mixed the film. So you're centered, even if you're in the back, front, left, or right. That's wild. Which is incredible. I mean, we have this proprietary sync technology that supports the audio playback, right? So that's what's so amazing. And, you know, we have buy-in from the filmmakers and from, you know, the studios, you know, and, and from, you know, uh, users and from the, 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 the cinemas because of the fact that we are respecting and fulfilling filmmaker intent. And we're essentially delivering another proprietary, another premium format to the user, which brings in more admissions, right? Without saying that we're better superior to an Atmos and Oro you know, or just a 5171. It's just a different kind of experience, right? Yeah, and it was so strange to me too. And, and Chris, I think kudos, man, because we've been seeing in television and in movies, the optical part of it, the quality keep, keep kept getting better and better and better. Sure. Meanwhile, audio, seem to be, you know, more compressed and more compressed and more compressed to the point now where, you know, we're, we're seeing like HD pictures, but with MP3 sound. 
and it was just it's kind of ridiculous like why hadn't audio been keeping up so I, I'm I'm really I'm really stoked about what you've done. It's pretty cool. Yeah, no, it's it's you're 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 right, and and that that's going to follow through to the consumer at home. What you just said, mm -hmm. okay? You, the same thing happened. We went from you know we had you know large format televisions at home, and we had the same audio for years, and then it was five one, and then everybody was you know, upsetting the wife because there were subwoofers and cords being run under the carpet. Let's move the couch, honey, and dive under. Let's, we got to go up the wall. We need to cut this out. Wait, no, oh wait, now it's five one. Sorry. So we got to add another one up there. So it's a, now, now it's a, it's a paradise for a wife. It's, there's a flat screen and a sound bar on the wall with a frame around it. Done. We're good. We put everything into one little sound bar and that's it. We're all happy. There's not, you know, and we're expecting that 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 the, that sound beam to that technology to give us height elements and everything else. So, yeah, but, but to take it back, you went from a, you went into HD and everybody went crazy and, and and audio never kept up. And when they made these flat screen televisions and they were real popular when they started coming out in two thousand four, two thousand five, two thousand six, that was like the unveiling of the flat screen. And everybody was running to Best Buy and buying the Samsung and the and the LGs and they had speakers built into the back of them. So we, we went so far backwards with audio that we put we put these small little two inch speakers on the back and then people would hang them on their wall. Right. <laughs> it's just, you know, I mean, it's 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 like, you know, I, anyway. So I yes, we're we're at a point where soundbar technology has really stepped up the game. Um, it, they they really have the, a lot of the technology from LG, Ambio from from Sennheiser has a remarkable uh, uh, Atmos soundbar that that does the trick but it, even if you look at Jonathan's room that he's in right now he's got tall ceilings tongue and groove up top he's got wood you know you you can't create something that's standard for everybody's playback in their family room right you just can't but everybody's skull for the most point <laughs> seen some strange shaped ones in my day they're all pretty much the same size. <laughs> They're all pretty much the same size. So, you know, to, to create that sense of space through headphones and give somebody that effect is going to be standardized a little bit more across the board than you are with the playback of a system in the hall. It's mm. just, you know, play this back through, through, through. Our, and we've seen the reactions of people from, from the movies that we play back. And we've seen the reactions of when people listen to the binaural microphone. You know, binaural audio has been around for a hundred years. We didn't invent it. I just applied it to modern technology and gave it a place to live. The, re the dummy head recordings with that have been going on for a long time just really capture what it sounds like to be in the room with the dummy head. And it's, a, you know, and people put their, their headphones on and they, and they get that effect. You can put the dummy head on a beach and send that file to somebody and like you were saying earlier, uh, Chuck, about the campfire, and you can place that dummy head at a campfire and play that back, close your eyes, and you'll feel it right here, right off the side of your face, or the crackling, a bird flying overhead, the forest, and, and that's fun. People like to, to, to feel that. Very difficult to do that in a loudspeaker environment. Very difficult. Yeah. You need a big array, you need a lot of speakers, you need a certain room and everything. So so we're, 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 we have a benefit um, of using the headphones and, and, and using the headphone space and binaural technology, you know, not, not if you, you want a little bit of a you know, cool back history on some of the binaural technology, binaural beats are a big therapeutic part of people's lives. So people use headphones and binaural technology um, to reduce stress, help sleep, anxiety, a lot of different disorders. So there's a lot of therapeutic parts to using, you know, binaural audio. Let's talk about that for a minute. Yeah. Okay. Uh, like this aud auditory integration therapy, yeah. AIP, right? Yeah. So there are people who say that um, listening or hearing affects things. I mean, it can, it, there's some therapeutic uses for uh, helping autistic children. Mm -hmm depression, dyslexia, uh, dementia, ADHD, Alzheimer's, right. I mean, the list goes on and on. Mm -hmm. and, and for people watching, 
there are two books that I, I want to recommend. Mm -hmm. Talk about this. One's called Hearing Equals Behavior okay. by a guy named Dr. Uh, Guy Berard. And another one's called When Listening Comes Alive by Paul uh, Madale. But um, they both they both kind of say the same thing, like that hearing can affect your brain Absolutely. And, and it can affect behavior. So this technology, I mean, in my mind, I can see, I'm, and I was going to ask you about, you know, VR, are you guys marrying this with VR and all? Because what good is it to have a virtual reality thing? But when you turn your head, it still sounds the same. Sure. Mm -hmm. But uh, to be able to actually use these things for, for uh, therapeutic uses. And I know you guys have partnered with Lemonade TV and the Texas Music Project to do things for the Texas Children's Hospital. So uh, so anyway, I just wanted to throw all that out there and say, yeah. Yeah. so yeah. tell us a little bit about that yeah. social. So Chris, social, I'll handle, uh, I'll handle uh, the therapeutic. Stuff. Yeah, sorry. And Chris, and on, the, on the VR and AR connection. Um, as you noted, you know, our Lemonade TV Plus, our interactive streaming platform is powered by SoundFi, right? We power it and we give it that differentiated audio experience. Um, and in partnering with the Texas Music Project and Michael Clay, um, which has been an amazing opportunity um, to give back. And especially in today's state of affairs, um, where, you know, people are stuck at home and they need that connection, that engagement, especially with respect to kids and people who are hospitalized. They don't get to see their families. And one of the things that really made a lot of sense for what we were doing with the Texas Music Project is the ability to bring the music for therapeutic treatments and purposes to the young patients at the che Texas Children's Hospital. So we've been working with Michael and the, and the TMP on the Music Heals program is what we're calling it, um, to deliver you know, these young artists who have all been captured in SoundFi you know, to help promote that wellness, to manage that stress, to alleviate that pain, um, enhance memory, improve people's communication abilities, and, and promote that physical rehab to put smiles on, on kids' faces. Right. Um, you know, the, the feedback we're getting from the music therapists at the hospital is overwhelming. Um, they are just over the moon with what we're doing. And it provides a very easy tool for them to reach the patients. And, you know, we're, we're thankful for that. And we can, we hope to continue the relationship and the partnership into the future. Um, you know, obviously the, the pandemic has been a, a very unfortunate trying, you know, unprecedented experience for all of us. And we're all trying to find silver lining. And I think this is one of them. You know, there, there are experiences that are going to resonate that are going to prevail, even when we're in back into some sense of normalcy, which we hope will happen soon. And, you know, this ability for us to deliver this, this uh, very 3D spatialized audio is, is one of those 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 formats, those those uh, experiences that I think is, is as Chris was saying, is going to carry the day. Yeah. yeah. What Absolutely. do you think? You haven't said anything. <laughs> You've been sitting there listening, man. <laughs> well, you know, to touch on one more piece, and then I'd love to hear your your thoughts on this, Chuck and John. Is that the other therapeutic piece to this is what you just touched on. That, that there's a fascinating, there's a phenomenon when it comes to binaural beats and what, what can be done. So the two books you recommended, yes, um, uh, there's others out there. And, um, you know, the, what, what the brain perceives from a left and right frequency is the phenomenon that, that, that still, um, you know, you know, 300 hertz in one ear and, 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 and 315 in the other is a 15 hertz difference. And, and that's what's heard and what we call the third eye. That's what's heard in the brain. That brain perceives one tone 
when you do in the binaural tones and that one tone can stimulate you into euphoria sleep yeah. relaxation um uh, uh you know make you upbeat you can do a lot with binaural beats it, and it's, it's just like anything else it's like going for hypnosis if you walk into hypnosis like you know uh with the pessimistic attitude like what am i doing here it's not gonna work mm -hmm. okay Okay, you, 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 is, is no, there's no forced magic there. It's not like the movie Scanners. Okay, we're not, <laughs> not, we're not, we're not dealing with that. So you walk in, you go to a dark room, you put your headphones on, and you close your eyes. The binaural therapy works, um, and and it's and it's amazing what can be done. Um, and just on a on a on a on a on a side note, which you know you know I'm sure you guys will find interesting, and people listening in will find interesting, is that the genesis of the whole project of Soundfly came for me with the, um, you know, listening to binaural beats for sleep therapy. I didn't oh. want to go under like going through the, 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 the doctor and Ambien and drugs and everything for sleep therapy. So I was using binaural beats to go to bed. Oh, I was wow. testing out. I had all these different frequencies that I was trying out and I was, I was, you know, you know, um, using that for sleep therapy and I was testing it on other people and it was working and it was great. And I noticed that a lot of these uh, hypnotherapists were using affirmations where somebody is actually using a software program to create and stimulate the binaural therapy. And then they're whispering into a microphone. And when that whole thing's composed and played back for somebody, they're hearing the message in their sleep in the positive affirmation that somebody was talking to them about during their sleep. So it's kind of creepy because you go to bed you hand, go, it hand it over back <laughs> going to bed taking off your headphones and um you know in the morning you wake up and if somebody was talking about you know the red jacket over and over in the night you're gonna wake up that's gonna be in your brain hmm. yeah yeah so there's a, there's a whole phenomenon behind it and um uh you know i i i um written a story and a script and, and had pitched it to a studio that had to do with kids who were abusing this technology. Oh, wow. um, yeah. So I'd, I'd written a suspense kind of twilight zone horror story, if you will, about kids <laughs> who were manipulate, manipulating each other's minds by trading these beats through a, a Facebook for audio files. And this mm -hmm. is where, this is where the whole sound game was. It was called the sound syndicate. This was a Facebook of audio files where kids five years into the future were trading these amongst each other. And if you wanted to listen to a binaural beat that was really popular, you ran a, an antivirus software through it to make sure that what you were hearing didn't have something hidden into it. Yeah. So the Black Mirror episode. Exactly. 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 And so yeah. this 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 um, you know this, this this girl was tricked by the school, and this is a story about like Carrie and her revenge back to the kids at school was she found the most popular beat that was possible that was binaural audio. She put in a horrible affirmation in it that she got out of her grandmother's book of Romanian curses, and she ended up possessing all these kids. <laughs> anyway, this 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 was a movie with a working title of Hex H E X, and the tagline was "Evil Hurts H E R T Z." <laughs> That's awesome. So this spawned this whole project because. When I went to the studio, which oddly enough was Sony, um, they said, this is great. And I said, by the way, this movie is going to be in binaural audio. <laughs> so as you're listening to it and we're going to have affirmations during the film and they said, well, how is this possible? And I said, well, I have an app that I built that allows this to take place and it sinks in the theater. And at the time, my entertainment lawyer said, don't move forward with this movie, create the app create the technology, get it out to the world, come back to the movie, and you got a story to tell. Wow, that's yeah. that sounds like some Tim Draper stuff right there. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> Tim Draper, like, uh, I, I pitched him a, 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 an app for AI, and I said, man, all the data that we can collect with this app, you know, has all these implications for robotics, and we can do this whole thing and sell all the data to the robotics company. And he's looking at me like, well, then why don't you just start a robotics company? <laughs> oh you know just it, that that same thing build yeah. it build it yeah but why not go ahead you know 
you want to put this movie out that's that makes a lot of sense actually yeah, yeah. eventually we'll, we'll make the film we've got we've got enough production background and 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 uh you know studio executives on our team and firepower and, and everybody loved it and uh but it, it spawned and it's an interesting story if people listen to this and it spawned a uh it spawned okay. something great uh, are we gonna have to like edit this out of the show <laughs> no no absolutely not no it's a great story yeah. story and it spawned it spawned what is now you know sound fi and 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 it, and it you know came from this movie idea and it came from binaural beats and it came from something therapeutic and um you know huh. and it, it's a, it's a fun and interesting story but um you know we'll eventually do it we'll eventually we'll eventually uh you know make the film but uh you know for now um, you know, we're, we're going to change some lives and, and, and elevate experiences, um, you know, through music and the binaural aspect for music is, you know, everybody's so used to hearing stereo and the way things are recorded. When you give a binaural recording, they think you just, you know, you just created a, a new galaxy somewhere. Like, what is this? How did this come about? I'm like, it, it's been there. We're just enabling it for, for, for you to hear. It's, it's, it's always been there. Um, this is a silver lining in, in this in this pandemic, you know, because um, there aren't many silver linings at a time like this. You know, yeah. you got to find them, and and, and uh, creating a, a streaming platform where people can hear spatial audio for music through their headphones when everybody's at home and looking for an escape route to hear something that sounds magical and live is, um, you know, a, a positive part of of what's happened to the world here with COVID and everything else is we're, we're, you know, people rely on their devices and their headphones and, and, and even more, more than they ever have. But it checks the boxes too, up and down the value chain, right? I mean, all the stakeholders, we're not doing anything to synthesize or make or deliver anything artificial, right? And that's why we have the support of the artists, you know, um, and the music labels and the managers, you know, um, who all see it. And realize, you know, this is the next best thing to an in-person event. I mean, you get the best seat in the virtual house, right? So um, it's it's amazing, you know, what we've been able to do with a pivoted technology, right? I mean, these these were our plans, but we had to sort of act quickly and figure out, you know, how do we solve some of the challenges and problems that these artists are having, right? They're not able to tour, right? That concert revenue is not coming in. There's no gate, yeah. right? They're not able to meet with their, you know, radio station partners. They're not able to meet with the digital digital service providers, you know, the Apples and Spotify's of the world, you know? So how do we bridge that gap? How do we help them out, but do it in a way that's top notch, high quality, right? And seamless, right? I mean, obviously, there's these, these boxes you need to check, right? Are we fairly representing the music? Check. How difficult is it, right? Mm -hmm. It's easy. It's plug and play, right? How expensive is it, right? Won't get into that, but um, you know, obviously, there's relationships there, and you know, we we've been working various touch points with with the the artist and with the record label, and you know, what is, what is required of the end user? Nothing. Yes. You know, you log in, you put on your headphones, you're in, you're locked in, you're, you're taken to a, another dimension, you know, and it, it, it really, it goes, I mean, again, it, it's one of those things where, um, you know, Chris and I always kind of agonize over how do we convey this to people, right? As you said, with optical, with, with visual, you know, you can easily see the difference between SD and UHD. You can easily see the difference in 2D and 3D. You can easily see the difference between SDR and HDR. But it's, it's difficult to convey the difference between stereo and 3D spatial audio. Hmm binaural through headphones, right? It's just, it's not easy. And when we show people, we give them an AB, 
the difference is so striking. They're like, you did something here. It's it. You doctored this. It can't be. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and we struggle with that. Chris and I struggle. You know, if we put this out there, people are going to think that we just goosed it in our favor. We didn't do it. This is just our capture, our organic natural capture. Mm. You know. That's the truth. Yeah. Wait, so uh, of course, so we, we, we understand that the, the technology or the, the, the original plan was to have this experience with the app and their headphones in a movie theater. And of course, then movie going kind of went out the window for people for mm -hmm. because of the pandemic. And you found yourselves having to reposition and change your strategy a bit and so what was that challenge like you know were there a bunch of hoops hurdles or was it pretty seamless and smooth because to me music is the obvious place you know to adopt this technology and one of the things that uh, we're trying to do with this show and Chuck and I were talking about this right before we came on the air. We're trying to help people that are interested in the music industry, that uh, are students or professionals or just fans, you know, audio files, whatever they might be. And we want to, you know, we understand we live in a VUCA world, you know, the whole volatile, uncertain, complex, ambiguous. Well, of all the, the industries you could ever want to be in, music is probably the most VUCA of the VUCA worlds, you know? And so to be able to help those people that are interested in being successful, either at, you know, as musicians or in the business, help them sort of navigate where we're going because it is very, you know, where, what is, when the new normal finally takes hold, what is the music industry gonna look like? Are we going to have gigs? Are we, how are we going to make money? So if we can connect those folks with people who have been successful and people who we consider are the architects of the new music industry, the new business. And I think that includes you guys. And, you know, that's why we, we were really excited to get you guys to come and talk to us because we've been talking to people in the VR space and the health space and the education space, but but we are musicians first and foremost, and we believe, unlike a lot of people, that music is primarily a thing you do with your ears, mm -hmm. that you enjoy with your ears. Some people, they hear with their eyes, but we believe that we hear with our ears first, right? You know, so it makes sense to go, oh, we gotta have sound fire. These come on and explain to us, what is it? What's the big deal? Why should we care? Why should musicians like really like get excited about this thing of, hey, we're going to be able to reproduce for your listening an experience that puts them right in the middle of the recording session. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I don't mean, you know, that, that you know, like, now, Chuck, I know you were involved in a lot of records that had no budget where they could just record for three months or three years. But to be able to put a guy in a room where this was recorded live with a couple of microphones and a sound file, the binaural mic, right? In the, I mean, people that haven't seen um, the behind the scenes thing, but maybe we should do that one day. Sure. You record. But Chuck came to the last session and stood there looking at the mic like that's it I'm like that's it dude that's where the magic happens mm -hmm. and you put the headphones on and you hear the side stick like you're standing in front of the drum kit it's kind of crazy i didn't believe it i honestly i was like yeah it sounded like hype right and i've heard about binaural i'm not stupid i mean i not but until it was our stuff. I mean, when, when I started listening to the to the Lemonade TV broadcast, powered by Sound Five, the Sennheiser, and I put on those headphones the first time to really listen to the broadcast, I flipped out, and I was like, I was not kidding. You know, I was typing on the <clears throat> like, holy crap, this is like, like being there. Mm -hmm. 
that it's kind of crazy. It's kind of crazy. What, what well, are the it's, not crazy. it's not crazy. It's something that should happen. You know, let me tell you a quick story. Um, on Ricky Lee Jones's Pirates album, uh, the very last song, on, I think it's Side B. I can't think of what the name of it is. Uh, but it's a party song. And all the musicians in the room, we stood around three mics. Steve Gadd had a box, a cardboard box where he played drums. And she sang this song and we all, I wish I knew exactly what that song is, but you can check it out. It's the last song on side A or B. Is it Pirates, the Pirates album? Yeah, the Pirates album. Now, in doing it, we're in the studio, everybody had on earphones. Me, I to cover my ears halfway. I imagine some of other people do the same thing. But Steve was playing a box, a cardboard box, about six or seven musicians around three mics. It was so much fun. And you can tell that we were having fun. But when I listened to the record, it had nothing to do about what I enjoyed and heard there, even wearing earphones. Once they mastered the record and mixed the record, I didn't get the same feeling. No. Oh yeah. No. Hey everyone, my name is Jerry Robert and I'm the publisher at Black Card Books and I'm telling you, we have just published this book, The Tune of Success, Unmasking Your Genius by two musical geniuses who have uh, played bass and played drums and contributed to lots of different albums, uh, uh, playing with Steely Dan, Quincy Jones, Aretha Franklin. I mean, these are two legends in the music industry. And if you've ever wondered about how you break into the music industry, and it's a business, it goes well beyond just talent. It's a business. This book will help you do it. And, and there's no book like it. And that's why we at Black Card Books could not be happier to have published this book. And if you are interested or you know somebody who's interested in the music business, get yourself a copy and get them a copy right away. Guys, we are all excited about this. We know this is going to become an international bestseller and it's going to help a lot of people go to the next level in the music business.